Okay, so I'm going to be talking about direct proof here. Uh, things get um, pretty formal here, so you need to make sure that you're paying attention, you're writing stuff down, you understand what's going on. I'm going to try to rush through these videos in terms of talking quickly and not taking too many pauses, but you'll probably need to pause it while you're watching it because uh, uh, there's going to be some deep stuff here that you need to stop and think about for a second. So the statement is, if it is raining, then the grass is wet. And now you can look for loopholes here, but let's say that the grass, we're out on the oval there, there's no cover. If it is raining, then the grass is wet. This is what we call a conditional statement. And it takes a very particular form. If P is true, then Q is true. So if it is raining, which is P, if that is true, then Q, the grass is wet, will also be true. We can abbreviate that mathematically. And that just looks like P with this little arrow, with two, like a, draw it exactly like that. And the way that you read that is P implies Q. So raining, it is raining, implies the grass is wet. P implies Q. You might be tempted to think about that arrow as an equal sign, but it's not an equal sign. Now, it's pretty easy to see why. Uh, P implies Q does not mean that Q implies P. So, for instance, um, if it is raining, then the grass is wet. Those, that, that arrow only works one way because we can't say if the grass is wet, then it is raining because maybe someone just turned the sprinkler on. There might be other reasons why the grass is wet. All right, so uh, we are going to do direct proofs and direct proofs are as follows. So a direct proof involves assuming P is true and then showing that the conclusion Q follows. So assuming that it's raining and then showing that the grass is wet. Of course, all of this is gonna happen with numbers here. All right, so here's our first example. Prove that if A is odd and B is even, then A plus B is odd. Now you probably all know this intuitively. Let's come up with an example. Prove that if A is odd, A can be three and B is even, B is uh, two then three plus two is five, which is odd. Um, and that will work for everything. Now I could give you a million of those examples, three plus two, five plus uh, four. I could do them all day, uh, but I'm not proving anything. I'm just coming up with a specific example that works. So we need to prove this, we need to prove it algebraically. Uh, a couple of key uh, techniques here that we use. Um, prove that if A is odd, okay. Actually, let's do B first. B is easy. B is even. So if B is even, I'm just going to write B equals 2K. Now, K, K is just an integer. That is, it's in the set of integers. Okay, so that technique, very, very important. If you want to represent an even number, come up with 2K where K is an integer. Uh, prove that if A is odd. All right, so if A is odd, I can write that as an even number. Uh, again, a different variable because it doesn't need to be the same. Now, 2m plus 1. And again, that's where m is an integer. All right, so I'm going to prove now that if a equals 2m plus 1 and b equals 2k, then a plus b will be odd. All right, and so a direct proof is simply assuming something's true, assuming this is true and then showing that this will also be true. So let's do that, um, a plus b. And we've already said that a is uh, 2m plus one, and b is 2k. And now we need to play with that to prove that 2m plus one plus 2k is odd. So how am I gonna do that? Well, 2m and 2k have a common factor of two. So I can pull two out here and get M plus K. And then I'm left over with that plus one there. Now, M plus K. M plus K is an integer plus an integer. So that's gonna give me another integer. Um, note, M plus K is integer. Uh, let m plus k equal n uh, equals 2n plus 1. Therefore, a plus b is odd. 
And hopefully you can see there we've got 2n plus 1. That's what odd numbers are. They're a, a, an even number, 2n plus an odd number. We are, we've done it. We've proved it. Finished. So same kind of deal here. Prove that if a is odd and b is odd, then a, b is odd. Um, so we know that a is odd. So that means that we can represent it as 2k plus 1. We know that b is odd, so we can represent it as uh, 2m plus 1, where k is an integer and m is an integer. Um, and now we need to know what happens when we multiply those together. All right, so ab equals 2k plus 1 times 2m plus 1. Uh, expand that using the FOIL method. You don't need to watch me do that. Okay, and what do we have? We've got um, all of this junk here and then a plus one on the end. And we're trying to prove that this whole thing is odd. So if I can prove that all of that blue underlined stuff is even and then there's that plus one on the end, then it must be odd and the game's over. So we can see a common factor of two there. That is sort of the secret to it. So now we've got 2km plus m plus k plus 1. Now, if I uh, let 2km plus m plus k equal n, and n is an integer, right? Because k and m are integers, and the only thing that could possibly happen when you multiply two integers together, multiply that by 2, add an integer, add another integer, is get an integer. We didn't need to prove that. That's self-evident. Uh, we have 2n plus 1. That is odd. Therefore, ab is odd. There's our proof. You've seen the same technique twice here, being able to represent something as an odd number and then being able to factorize it and then sub in some known value as, a, as another integer, same deal. Third example here, very similar technique. Uh, P and Q are integers such that P is divisible by 5. All right. I'm not even going to read through the whole question. I'm just going to start there. If P is divisible by 5, then P can be represented as P equals um, 5 k where k is an integer and q is divisible by 3 so q can be written as 3m where m is an integer prove that pq is divisible by 15 all right that should be pretty straightforward so pq equals 5k times 3m equals 15km uh, where km, we can let that equal, let's try again. Let's let km equal n, and n is clearly an integer because k and m were integers. Um, therefore, 15n done. Therefore, pq divisible by 15. Easy. Here's the first one that might stretch you a little bit. Let x and y be positive real numbers. Prove that if x is greater than y, then x squared is greater than y squared. All right, so let's see. Um, if that's true, what can we say? We could say that x minus y would be greater than zero. So because x and y are positive numbers, if x is greater than y, so if x is 9 and y is 3, if I subtract one from the other, the number is going to be greater than zero. All right, and we can start right there. All right, so what are we going to do with these x's and y's? Well, we've got like an x squared and a y squared in the conclusion. So what if I were to, to create some x squareds and y squareds here? All right, x squared plus y squared. Let's, um, what do you see here? Uh, not much. It's not very useful. What if I were to make it a negative? What if I were to say x squared minus y squared? I'm trying to tell you here that um, proof is a creative process. x squared minus y squared. Oh, wait a minute. What can that be written as? That can be written as 
the difference of two squares, right? x plus y, x minus y. All right, so let's take a look at that now. x plus y bracket x minus y. Well, what do we know about x minus y? Well, we know that um, x is greater than y, so we know that x minus y is greater than zero, so we can say that that's positive. What do we know about x plus y? Well, x plus y, we know x plus y is um, also positive. So what does that mean for us? Well, that means that x squared minus y squared is also positive because a positive times a positive is a positive. And so that means that x squared minus y squared equals x plus y times x minus y, which is greater than zero. So what does all of this mean for us? It means that x squared minus y squared is greater than zero, and it means that x squared is greater than y squared. All right, um, you have to make a mental leap there of saying, I've got x and y, they're positive numbers. Let's square them. Let's see what happens when I square them. We'll get some answers um, moving forward through that. A tough question. Um, but also there is a sneaky way to do these questions where that sort of thing happens. And that's something called a false proof. All right, so here we go with this one. Uh, I think we might wrap it up after this. Uh, let x and y be any two positive real numbers. Prove that x plus y over 2 is greater than or equal to the root of xy. Whoa, okay. Now, what can we say about p? Well, p, like p and q, so p is our initial statement. All we're saying is x and y are positive. That's it. That's all we know. And then we're supposed to somehow get from there to this statement here, x plus y over 2 is greater than or equal to root xy. I just, with that last question, we had to make a mental leap. With this one, we'd have to make an even bigger mental leap to start, to start getting to that. So we're going to do something called a false proof. Um, false proof. I'm really writing that in capital letters. I want you to understand that what I'm about to do is a false proof. A false proof is very, very useful, but it's not an official proof until you make it an official proof. So let's do the false proof. What's a false proof? Start with Q and prove P. So we're saying um, let X and Y be any positive, two positive real numbers. So that bit's P and that implies Q or it's supposed to imply Q and this bit's Q. Okay, so in other words, what we're going to do, we're going to start from Q and we're going to prove P. So let's just start working with it x plus y over 2 is greater than or equal to root xy. All right, and let's see what happens. I'm going to multiply both sides by 2. Why? Just because. Just because it feels good. That's. If this didn't work, I'd have to go away and, and try something else. All right, uh, what can I do from here? Well, having something in, in square roots is, like, uncomfortable. So why don't we square both sides? x plus y squared is greater than or equal to 4xy. And this next bit doesn't feel right, but hey, like why not? Why don't we why don't we expand that thing? That's not usually what I try to do when I'm when I'm doing proofs, but hey, maybe it'll maybe it'll give me something here. Um, plus y squared is greater than or equal to uh, 4xy. Uh, okay, I've got 2xy there, I've got 4xy there. If I move that 4xy over to this side, I'd get something like x squared plus 2xy minus 4xy plus y squared is greater than uh, 0, greater than or equal to 0. Uh, and then that's going to be x squared minus 2xy plus y squared is greater than or equal to zero. Now, if I factorize that, that thing there, I could get um, x squared, oh, sorry, not x squared, I could get x minus y squared is greater than or equal to zero. Okay, um, let's see here, what have I got? 
Well, x minus y squared is greater than or equal to zero. Uh, that means that they're two positive real numbers, I think. Yep, this bit implies here, I won't go into too much depth, but this implies that x and y are two positive real numbers. This is only true, two positive real numbers. Now, what did I say in the beginning? This is a false proof because we started at our um, conclusion, Q, and we moved towards, we moved towards this hypothesis. Uh, but we can fix a false proof and we just do it by rewriting the whole false proof. Oops. We do it by rewriting the whole false proof backwards. We start here, we move here, we move up until we get to Q. Now, as long as we do that, we're fine. And a false proof is a great way to start a proof if you don't know how to get to the, the end from the start. Instead, start at the end and, and get to the start. All right, there is a, covered a lot of ground there. That's direct proof.